Hello students. Uh, today we will discuss about the circuit breakers and uh, today's uh, its first part and the second part we will discuss in our next lecture. Uh, well in this part we will discuss about the need of uh, circuit breaker, uh, why we need circuit breakers and what is the importance of a circuit breaker in the power system protection along with that we will study uh, different types of circuit breakers uh, that are being used in different industries uh, power sector and also in our uh, transmission distribution and uh, generation setup so uh, these lecture consist of two parts as I already said so let's start uh, in introduction we will discuss about uh, circuit breakers very briefly so uh, in brief uh, what is circuit breaker we can say a circuit breaker is an automatically operated electrical switch uh, designed to protect an electrical circuit from damage caused by uh, excess current from an overload or short circuit its basic function is to interrupt uh, current flow uh, after a fault is detected so uh, we can say that uh, the circuit breaker uh, is the guard of the our whole power system so it can protect our equipments devices like transformers, generators, and uh, uh, sometimes our home appliances from the damage and the damage caused by the different type of short uh, short circuit current overloads or maybe uh, due to some other uh, conditions. So there are different types of circuit breakers. There are different type of vendors uh, and manufacturers. Uh, that are manufacturing the circuit breakers uh, so along with that there are numerous type and uh, there are uh, many uh, discrimination in terms of uh, like we have OCBs we have ACBs which we'll, we will discuss literally in our uh, lecture so uh, circuit breaker is a very vast topic and uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, parameter uh, in in this circuit breaker so we have to study uh, it's quite interesting uh, to study uh, this circuit breaker and uh, let's see what we will discuss in uh, next slide talk about importance of uh, circuit breaker in especially industrial sector uh, as well as in our domestic use so we can say a circuit breaker uh, like works as a fail safe component uh, of your electrical structures uh, protecting it from hazards of overloading uh, damage and other problems like I mentioned uh, earlier uh, just as uh, if I can say simply first uh, it will detect any fault condition uh, that is present on the system and the system can be uh, a transmission line can be a generating system uh, can be a gen uh, distribution uh, setup so uh, then immediately it will interrupt the current if there are uh, any signs of irregular flow uh, as the designs are concerned uh, it is designed to have an um, automatically operated uh, switch to facilitate a quick response to any threat because uh, we have studied uh, in our very first lectures uh, about the uh, needs of uh, uh, protection system so the quick response is one of the most important trait of any uh, power protection uh, equipment uh, so if there are no fuses uh, on your system uh, using electricity would be very impractical because it will leave your equipment and uh, electrical lines unprotected from 
uh, power surges and uh, eventually uh, resulting to fire uh, well uh, let's talk about some uh, modern uh, setup uh, well in modern setup there are complex type of uh, circuit breaker I can say uh, like uh, some are uh, manufactured uh, to handle the high voltages uh, most of these uh, use gas, oil, or vacuum, air pressure uh, in its system to provide a more effective uh, response to high levels of electrical malfunctions. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, information and uh, there is uh, a lot of importance of uh, uh, this equipment in industry uh, to protect our uh, power system or any uh, setup because uh, if the circuit breaker is not there so it is a great chance uh, that uh, it will damage our uh, system so we have a simple question uh, that what is circuit breaker how we can define that uh, this equipment uh, what we have is circuit breaker uh, what traits uh, it possess so we can say that a circuit breaker is a piece of equipment uh, which can uh, number one make or break a circuit either manually uh, or by remote control under normal conditions uh, this is the first trait uh, because it is very necessary uh, to disconnect or isolate the system immediately because if the system is not isolated then there is a fair chance that the system can be uh, uh, approached to uh, a danger uh, the second one is uh, break a circuit automatically under fault condition well automation is very important in this case uh, just uh, for the sake of example, uh, you cannot uh, uh, have a, any supervisor or you cannot have any labor or worker uh, at the equipment sites, uh, site for 24 hours that can monitor the fault conditions and uh, trip it manually. So it will be a very difficult job because uh, the fault uh, occurs in milliseconds or even in microseconds. Uh, if the system or circuit breaker is not automated so uh, it will take a lot of time and that time is very critical uh, so it will cost a lot in terms of the system damage the third one is uh, make a circuit either manually or by remote control uh, under fault conditions uh, not only uh, it break a circuit but also the circuit breaker had to uh, make it again because uh, you cannot uh, stop the uh, whole setup for uh, several minutes or even for hours because the circuit breaker has to break it or make it again now there are several conditions of uh, making a circuit again there are automatic uh, uh, setups uh, present and uh, there are manual setups present so it is the uh, approach of the protection system that uh, um, which on through which approach he is uh, going if he is going with manual uh, making so it will take time uh, if it uh, if he is going with remote control or automatic uh, making uh, so it will take less time but uh, automatic uh, making required a very precise calculation very precise software very precise setup so uh, I can say uh, if someone asks what is circuit breaker so a circuit breaker must possess these three uh, major qualities uh, which I have mentioned here uh, let's we uh, discuss about the basic operating principle of circuit breaker 
remember this is not uh, operating principle of uh, any specific type of uh, circuit breaker this is a general operating principle how a circuit breaker operates uh, when we install so we can say a circuit breaker uh, consists of a fixed and moving contacts uh, earlier like i said the make or break uh, which are uh, called electrodes so uh, there are two conditions under normal operating conditions these contacts remain closed and will not automatically uh, open until and unless the system uh, becomes faulty uh, of course you can say the contacts can be opened manually or by remote control whenever desired so this is the first condition that in normal conditions uh, the circuit breakers are supposed to not open its contact if it opens so it is a false operation so when a fault occurs in the second case when a fault occurs on uh, any part of the system the grip coils or you can say the electrodes uh, of the circuit breaker get energized and uh, the moving contacts are pulled apart by some mechanism uh, through which the circuit gets open now this make and break uh, mechanism uh, makes different types of uh, circuit breakers like oil circuit breaker have different approach air circuit breakers have different approach uh, sf6 sulfur hexa fluoride uh, circuit breaker have different approach and vacuum circuit breaker have uh, different approach same is the case when the contacts of the circuit breaker are separated under fault condition uh, specifically an arc is stuck between them and that arc is uh, due to uh, the make or break so uh, it is very uh, important to uh, extinguish that arc because if we talk about high voltages uh, the arc is much greater and it cause uh, uh, severe damage to the system or may cause fire so uh, therefore the main problem uh, in the high voltage circuit breaker uh, is that to extinguish the arc within the shortest possible time so that the heat generated by it may not reach a dangerous value so uh, this is the important thing how to extinguish arc so when we uh, study in details the four types of uh, circuit breakers uh, we will also discuss how the arc is uh, generated and uh, also how uh, a specific circuit breaker can extinguish it uh, within its uh, setup so this is the general uh, operating uh, principle uh, of any circuit breaker uh, you can say a theme uh, of a circuit breaker or you can say uh, a fundamental uh, thing about the circuit breaker on which any circuit breaker uh, is working upon so uh, while studying any circuit breaker uh keep in your mind this uh, about this theme so we cannot deviate uh, from this basic or you can say the fundamental theme of operation of circuit breaker uh, like in our uh, previous slide we will discuss about the arc uh, phenomena so it is very important uh, to discuss why this arcing or arc phenomena happens so in uh, if i dis uh, describe it very briefly so i can say that when a short circuit occurs uh, as you know there are two electrodes present uh, a heavy current uh, flow through the contacts of circuit breaker before they are opened by protective system uh, at this uh, instant when the contacts begin to separate uh, the contact area decreases rapidly and large fault currents causes increased current density and hence rise in temperature uh, so we can say uh, when we talk about electrodes the surface area of the electrodes get shorter and the amount of the current 
uh, increasingly very fast that is the fault current so uh, in this case the arc is developed now when the arc is developed the heat produced in the medium between uh, the contacts uh, air is always uh, present uh, so uh, that arc can ionize it or uh, if uh, if there is oil present the oil can vaporize so the ionized air or vapor act as a conductor uh, an arc is stuck between the contact uh, so the arc provide a low resistance path and consequently the current in the circuit remains uninterrupted so long as arc uh, persists. So this is the uh, basic phenomena that why arcing uh, in circuit breaker happens and normally uh, like if you uh, operate any household switch uh, which is of heavy current like of air condition you feel uh, some sort of arcing in it or when you operate any motor button heavy motor button you can say the water pump motor button uh, you feel uh, any sort of arcing in that so that's the same phenomena happening here but at uh, but in domestic setup uh, you don't have any high voltages there are low currents as compared to the industrial setups uh, so if we talk about arcs it depend upon uh, three uh, major factors one is uh, degree of ionization uh, which is uh, the arc resistant increases uh, but decreases in the number of ionized particle between the contacts remember uh, in between contacts uh, if there is a oil circuit breaker oil is present if there is a air circuit breaker air is present so the arc has to ionize it for conducting purpose the second one is length of the arc uh, the arc resistance increases with the length of the arc separation of the contact now remember uh, as the length of uh, length increases uh, the arc become uh, weaker so uh, the length between the contacts increases uh, the arc become weaker and the, if the length between two electrodes uh, is less so the arc will be greater so the length of the arc depend on this and the third one is cross section of the arc the arc resistance increase but decrease in area of uh, cross section of the arc so uh, these three uh, are the major uh, factors uh, on which arcing phenomena uh, depend upon uh, well uh, as we explain the arcing phenomena now we have to discuss uh, what are the methods of arc extension extinction so we can say we have uh, two methods of uh, extinguishing the arc in the circuit breakers uh, it is majorly divided to the two types like high resistance method and uh, the low resistance or uh, you can say the current zero method uh, let's discuss uh, first about uh, high resistance method we can say in this method uh, the arc resistance is made to increase with time so the current is reduced to a value insufficient uh, to maintain the arc uh, consequently uh, the current is uh, interrupted or the arc will be uh, extinguished uh, the problem with this uh, high resistance method or you can say uh, the basic that the basic disadvantage of this method is that uh, enormous energy is dissipated in the arc therefore it is employed only in DC circuit breaker and in low capacity uh, AC circuit breakers as you know that uh, uh, th that energy that is uh, uh, created in the form uh, so it will create a lot of heat uh, the energy is exposed in the form of heat energy 
and uh, some of the systems cannot sustain that heat uh, so uh, like the three factors we have started earlier we can say uh, the resistance of arc may be increased by uh, lengthening the arc uh, you can increase the length of the arc and secondly you can cool the arc uh, there are different method the gas flask uh, circuit is also uh, available uh, also uh, reducing the cross section uh, area of the arc and the other one is splitting the arc so these are the four uh, method through which you can increase the resistance so if the resistance is increased so it will be easy to extinguish the arc uh, the second method is uh, low resistance or current zero uh, method well this method is uh, um, uh, uh, used for arc extension in the ac circuits uh, and in this method arc resistance is kept low uh, in the previous method we have high resistance in this case we have low resistance so when there uh, is a arc so the arc extinguishes naturally and is prevented from restriking uh, in spite of uh, rising voltage across the uh, contacts uh, so it has also uh, some factor you can see the deionization of the medium uh, is the major key uh, uh, thing which will be do uh, in this method and you can also um, uh, deionize the medium by the four methods like lengthening the gap the, the dielectric strength of the medium um, as we know is proportional to the uh, length of the gap between uh, the con uh, the contact similarly high pressure uh, if the pressure in the vicinity of the arc is increased the density of the particles constituting the discharge also increases the third one is cooling uh, like natural combination of ionized particle take place more rapidly if they are uh, allowed to cool and the fourth one is blast effect like i mentioned earlier if the ionized particle between the contacts are swept away and replaced by unionized particle the dielectric strength of the medium can be increased uh, to some extent uh, now remember these are the two basic methods of arc extinguishing one is high resistance and the other one is low resistance so when we are studying uh, different type of circuit breakers uh, they are using uh, some are using high resistance methods some are using the low resistance method so in principally there are they are two different methods so we just have to uh, study and uh, uh, we don't need to worry about uh, now about the circuit breaker especially uh, we have to read these uh, two method in principle and uh, let's see uh, which circuit breaker is using high resistance and uh, which circuit breaker is using the low resistance method when we uh, study uh, those circuit breaker types uh, now we have the uh, classification of circuit breakers there are several ways of classifying the circuit breakers uh, however uh, the general way of classification is on the basis of medium used for arc extension like we uh, study in detail about the arc extinction or arc phenomena so on the basis of uh, that arc extinction mechanism we have divided into uh, four types one is oil circuit breaker uh, in this uh, type of circuit breaker oil is used for extinguishing the arc that's why it is uh, called as oil circuit breaker uh, the second part uh, the second type is uh, air blast circuit breakers uh, in this in this type of circuit breaker air is used to extinguish the arc so whenever uh, there is a arc uh, 
the air is used to extinguish uh, that arc. Uh, the third one is uh, SF6 circuit breaker, which is sulfur hexafluoride. Uh, so, in this circuit breaker, uh, sulfur hexafluoride gas is used uh, to extinguish the arc. And the fourth one is most important vacuum circuit breaker uh, in which a vacuum is created uh, which is uh, used for arc extinction. So remember we will uh, discuss each of uh, type in complete detail uh, like uh, first we discuss about OCVs all circuit breakers then air circuit breakers then sulfur hexafluoride and then uh, vacuum circuit breakers uh, mostly in our country uh, OCBs are installed and now uh, SF6 are uh, installing at different place so in future uh, we will uh, be installing vacuum circuit breaker there are some cost uh, effects of these circuit breaker which we will discuss literally when we discuss each of them so first we will discuss about oil circuit breakers uh, so we will discuss about first we will discuss about oil how oil uh, working in this setup so we can say that uh, in such circuit breakers uh, insulating oil is present uh, like uh, in our transformer protection uh, setup, we will we studied about the transformer oil. It is used for the uh, arc quenching medium. So the contacts are open under oil, and an arc is struck between them. Uh, so the heat uh, of the arc evaporates uh, the surrounding oil and dissuades uh, it into the uh, substantial volume of gas uh, so as a result hydrogen gas is produced uh, and the hydrogen gas occupies the volume about 1000 times that of uh, oil decompose so the oil is therefore pushed away from the arc and expanding hydrogen gas bubble as you can see uh, in the figure uh, the blue one is the uh, parting context and the dotted line is the arc. Here uh, the bubble develops uh, so the arc extension is facilitated uh, by mainly by two process in simple words we can say firstly the hydrogen gas has high heat conductivity and cool the arc uh, thus aiding the deionization of the medium between the contacts because deionization is must. Uh, secondly, the gas setups uh, turbulence in the oil and forces it into the space between the contacts and the arc uh, eliminate uh, in this form. So this is the uh, major principle of oil in oil circuit breakers because in the previous slides we have mentioned uh, that why we are uh, naming it oil circuit breakers due to its uh, uh, arc extinguishing um, method. Uh, there are advantages and uh, disadvantages of uh, this uh, oil circuit breaker like if we talk about uh, advantage it absorbs the arc energy to decompose the oil into the gases which have excellent cooling properties the cooling is imp important uh, the faster the process of the cooling is done uh, the quicker the arc is extinguished uh, the second one is it acts as an insulator and permits a smaller clearance between live conductors and earth components the third one is the surrounding oil present cooling surface in close proximity to the arc. So these are the three uh, advantages uh, of the uh, oil circuit breaker. If we talk about the disadvantage, uh, it is inflammable and there is a risk of fire. 
the second one is it may uh, form an explosive mixture with air uh, also uh, it has the moisture problem uh, in the oil uh, the moisture uh, get uh, you can see it can conduct the current and cause explosive damage to the system and the third one is the arcing product like uh, example carbon remain in the oil and its quality deteriorates with successive operations like uh, during the multiple operation performs like uh, making and breaking and uh, arc extinguishing so the quality of oil decreases so in this case uh, we will changing the oil on regular basis and we have the mechanism to check the uh, oil circuit breakers or the quality of oil remember if the moisture level of the oil uh, if the moisture level in the oil increases so the arc uh, extinguishing capability of the OCB decreases so uh, it is very important uh, to maintain the system uh, so it can operate timely uh, now we will discuss about the types of oil circuit breakers uh, the oil circuit breakers uh, have two major categories uh, the first category is bulk oil uh, circuit breakers which have two subcategories that is plain break oil circuit breakers and the R control oil circuit breakers uh, the second uh, type is low oil uh, circuit breakers so we will discuss each of the type in detail with its uh, construction operation and you can see the advantages and disadvantages uh, about each type so first we will discuss the uh, plain break oil circuit breakers so in the plain break uh, circuit oil circuit breaker we will discuss its uh, operation and uh, construction uh, well as you can see from the figure uh, that it consists of a fixed and moving contacts enclosing in a strong uh, weather tight earth tank and uh, you, there is you can see also the oil level uh, in it uh, the air cushion provides sufficient room to allow for the reception of R gases without the ge generation of unsafe uh, pressure in the dome of the circuit breaker because you can see from the figure if the oil level is completely filled uh, so when there is a arc extinguishing uh, happening so you can see there is uh, there can be a blast because uh, the gas uh, has no escape out there so it will blast the whole circuit uh, secondly you can also see uh, a moving contacts and fixed contact uh, also present there and uh, at the bottom there is mentioned the transformer oil so as in the transformer section we have studied uh, that what is the function of uh, the transformer oil cooling is also one of them so under normal operating condition what will happen uh, the fixed contact you can see uh, on the bottom and the moving contacts remain closed uh, and the breaker carries the normal circuit current because it's a normal operation uh, but in the second case when a fault occurs uh, that moving contacts uh, on the bottom uh, are pulled down by the protective system and an arc is stuck which is vaporized the oil uh, as we uh, mentioned earlier into the hydrogen gas uh, the arc extension process uh, we already uh, discussed that how 
the arc is being extinguished in this uh, setup so the important thing that it is the, its structure is just like uh, a dome type structure uh, of this uh, type of uh, circuit breaker well there are some disadvantages of this uh, plane breaker uh, plane break all circuit breakers the first one is there is no special control over the arc other than uh, increase in length by spreading uh, separating the move, moving contacts therefore the successful interruption long arc length is necessary the second one is these breakers have long and inconsistent arcing times this is very important if the arcing times are inconsistent and uh, it is not proper so it is very difficult uh, for a uh, power system protection designer especially uh, to check the credibility uh, of uh, its protection system uh, the third one is these breakers do not permit high speed interruption one more important capability that is uh, missing in this scheme is that high uh, speed interruption because uh, the faster uh, the interruption speed, the quickest the fault is uh, diagnosed and the system is isolated. But if this if this not happen, so it will create problem and uh, it will create a drastic uh, change and uh, will create a uh, you can say uh, a hazard in this condition. So these three are the major. Uh, disadvantages of the uh, plane break uh, OCBs well the second type we have in uh, uh, specifically we are studying about uh, is our control uh, oil circuit breakers uh, which is the subtype of uh, bulk oil uh, set, uh, circuit breaker so it is also uh, a subdivision or uh, you can say it is divided into the two sub parts when um, the first one is uh, self blast oil circuit breaker and the other one is uh, force blast circuit breaker so briefly if I can say uh, in case uh, of a uh, plane break oil circuit breaker which is discussed previously there is a very little artificial control over arc so therefore a long arc length is essential in order that turbulence in the oil caused by the gas may assist in quenching it so uh, that's why there are two subtypes one is self plus oil circuit breaker in which uh, uh, arc control is provided by the internal means uh, that you can say the arc itself is employed for its own uh, extension efficiently and the second uh, part here is the forced blast oil circuit breaker uh, in which arc control is provided by mechanical means uh, external to the circuit breaker so if we go into the detail uh, there are also subtypes of self blast oil circuit breaker uh, which is plane explosion port uh, also the cross jet uh, explosion port and the, the third one is self uh, compensated uh, explosion port so we don't need to go into the further details we just know the basic two subtypes of our control uh, oil circuit breakers well the second major type of the OCB is the low oil circuit breaker uh, like uh, in bulk oil circuit breakers uh, which we have discussed previously oil has to perform two functions firstly it act as an arc quenching and secondly it insulate the live part from the earth 
so uh, in that process uh, it is evident that a small uh, amount of uh, oil is used in arc extension while the major part is utilized for insulation purpose so for this reason uh, the quantity of oil in bulk oil circuit breaker reach a very high figure as the system voltage increases so uh, this is not only increase in the expense, the tank size and also the weight of the circuit breaker. So for avoiding uh, that, we have uh, designed the low uh, oil circuit breaker. Uh, as you can see from the figure about its uh, construction. Uh, which shows the cross section of the single phase uh, low oil circuit breaker there are two compartments there separated from each other uh, but both filled with oil to avoid that problem that is in bulk circuit break, uh, bulk oil circuit breaker uh, it is divided into the two chamber the upper chamber is the uh, circuit breaker uh, circuit breaking chamber while the lower one is the supporting chamber as you can see from the figure uh, these two chambers are separated uh, by a partition uh, and oil from one chamber is prevented uh, from mixing with another chamber because if the oil between the two chambers get mixed so there is no need for separation. So by this we get two advantages or uh, the two problems that we have get solved uh, like uh, uh, the circuit breaking chambers uh, require a small volume of oil which is just enough for arc, arc extension and the secondly the amount of oil uh, to be replaced is reduced uh, uh, as the oil in the supporting chamber does not uh, contaminate it by the arc uh, as you can see the outer one is uh, the chamber that is the insulation insulating material uh, the breather is also uh, present uh, like we mentioned in the transformer section to check the quality of the oil and also use for other purpose so like we have on the bottom the operating rod similarly we have a drain wall to drain the oil so this is the basic uh, construction uh, of the uh, low level uh, you can say low oil circuit breakers so as the operation is concerned so you under normal operating conditions the moving contacts remain engaged uh, with the upper fixed contact that is the upper uh, side so whenever uh, there is a fault the moving contact is pulled down by the tripping spring and an arc is struck uh, so the arc energy uh, vaporizes the oil and produces gas under high pressure. So this uh, action uh, constrains the oil to pass through an external uh, or central hole in the moving contact and result in forcing seas of oil through the respective passages of the uh, turbulator. Uh, so the operation is uh, not complex. Uh, it's just divided into the two sections, the upper chamber and the lower chamber. The upper chamber have uh, different responsibility and the lower chamber have the uh, different responsibility for its operation. Uh, there is some advantages uh, of the low oil circuit breakers. Uh, and it is the it is basically comparison between the bulk, uh, bulk oil uh, circuit breaker and low oil circuit breaker so the first advantage we have it required lesser quantity of oil uh, as we discussed earlier uh, that's why we have to make chamber uh, in this scheme it required a small space because uh, when the oil is less the chamber will be uh, in a small size there is a reduced risk of fire because there are two separate chambers. The oil is less, the moisture problem is less, so there is a reduced risk of fire and hazard. 
similarly maintenance problem are reduced uh, there are no specific maintenance problem uh, are there uh, in this uh, low oil circuit breaker as compared to bulk oil circuit breaker uh, similarly it has some disadvantages uh, like uh, due to smaller quantity of oil the degree of carbonization is increased uh, this is a disadvantage but not uh, a great disadvantage you can say as compared to the other one the second one is there is a difficult of uh, difficulty of removing the gases from the uh, contact spaces in time and the third one is the dielectric strength of the oil deteriorates rapidly due to the high degree of carbonization remember uh, when the carbonization is high uh, the quality of oil deteriorates because uh, whenever the carbon contents increase in the oil uh, the insulation the insulating property of the oil get decreases uh, so it is important to check the oil uh, on a continuous basis to avoid this issue like we discussed several time about the proper maintenance and proper checks of the uh, circuit breakers and also the other devices so what are the major checks that we have to do uh, while performing the maintenance of ocbs uh, there are five checks mentioned here uh, number one we have uh, check the current carrying parts arcing contacts if the burning is severe the contact should be replaced uh, well uh, due to the severe and high uh, magnitude of the current flowing uh, the contacts of the uh, circuit breakers deteriorates and sometimes uh, uh, on a severe burning the contacts get damaged so it should be replaced if needed the second one we have uh, check the dielectric strength of the oil if the oil is badly discolored it should be changed like I mentioned earlier if the carbonization problem is continuous and uh, uh, the oil sample has to be taken and uh, it should be uh, checked properly um, through some lab uh, which uh, check it completely and analyze it uh, about the carbon content uh, in the oil so if it is above from a certain range so the oil must be changed the third one we have the check the insulation for uh, possible damage clean the surface and remove a uh, carbon deposit with the strong and uh, dry fabric so uh, the insulation must be protected the carbon uh, deposit must be uh, cleaned by a strong acid or any other fabric uh, so the contamination of the oil uh, should be avoided the fourth one is check the oil level oil level is very important if the oil level increase it is also not good and if the oil level is decrease uh, this is also uh, alarming so we have uh, a complete check on the oil level to, to avoid any uh, damage the fifth one is check closing and tripping mechanism the tripping and closing mechanism is the key uh, that's why the circuit breaker uh, is installed so if the closing and tripping mechanism is not working properly like if there is a spring installed if the string is loose uh, if the bolt is not tightened up so uh, due to this problem uh, the, the tripping and making or breaking the pro um, process uh, could be affected so it must be checked uh, while uh, checking the uh, oil circuit breaker so uh, these are some uh, important checks <coughs> or you can say that uh, the uh, uh, these are the checks that should be uh, on the first or top of the line there are also some uh, other checks which should be uh, performed 
but uh, these are the key checks that should be performed on oil circuit breakers so that's all from the first part of the circuit breakers uh, so we will discuss uh, about uh, air circuit breakers uh, sf6 sulfur hexafluoride and also the vacuum uh, circuit breaker in our next lecture so thank you very much